Hi everybody, my name is Wendy, and behind me is my husband Dave. Say hi Dave. Hi Dave. <laughs> so, um, I've actually done quite a few shorts videos on various of my YouTube channels, and I'm yet once again inspired to make this video. Um, impromptu, I did not dress up for this video. <laughs> We're literally in our kitchen preparing, doing our uh, raw food puppy food prep. And we go by the uh, BARF diet, the, the biologically um, appropriate. appropriate raw food diet for our 30 pound ish uh, Beagle Shepherd mix. She's behind me sleeping in her little house over there. So, um, and she is just absolutely thriving. She is, what, about 18 months now? Um, and I still call her a puppy because she's all bouncy puppy. And, you know, I just wanted to stop what I was doing and, and take a moment to make this video because I think a lot of people want to raw feed their puppy um, or their dog, don't know how or where to start. And we started immediately when she was uh, brought brought to us at six weeks old. And so we, we we decided ahead of time if we did get a get a dog that we would do this. And so I've done a lot of short videos, but I wanted to take a moment as we're preparing it to kind of explain a little bit more only because I think a lot of people shy away from it because they don't know what to do, what to buy, where to start, how much it's going to cost. And I had a dog before, um, rest his beautiful heart. And I did all the wrong things. I did. I thought I was doing him a favor. I thought I, you know, and I did it all wrong. I gave him all the wrong stuff. And I say wrong because he was, he just, he was lethargic. He was heavy. He was overweight he, he just, um, and developed diseases, I believe, because of his poor diet. And so for all of you, I'm just holding up my phone here, so I'll be pretty quick. But for all of you who want to even start, I just wanted to say that I, you, I, I you know, I also love gardening. And that's, I think part of what inspired this video is, is that, um, to grow things in your garden, if you're already gardening, to also grow things in your garden that, that your dog could, can eat, would love to eat, and um, is really good for them. And so puppy prep, honestly, puppy prep takes us, I don't know, probably maybe an hour every 10 days or so to go do the shopping, maybe. Not even really that long, because a lot of it is everything that we I already buy, too, here in the house for us. Um, but Dave actually picks out all of her meat, so I can kind of swing around and show you what he's cutting today. Um, but I wanted to kind of show me, too, instead of just a just a bunch of food and talking, um, you know, cause we're just, all we are, we are not experts. We're not veterinarians. We're not, we're just puppy parents who love our puppy and wanted to give her the best diet we possibly could. And as inexpensively as we could, but still do it, do it well. And so we did some research, started with the, the barf diet and we, we basically go by that. And I, you know, it's pretty much, I, I buy the same things for her as we eat, um, in general. And so, um, I wanted to just start here. I'm going to flip the camera around just for show you what I'm doing here. But, um, so really today is primarily I'm using what I had on hand. I do buy, I love using these frozen peas and carrots, but, um, I also do give her fresh carrots, uh, and chop them up or I put them in the food processor just for easier digestion. But she likes little pieces of carrots too. I will often make her a separate sweet potato. Don't put anything on it. Um, I also have here some canned pumpkin. Um, and we do give her some spices. We give her thyme, um, uh, MCT oil. I'm, I'm, in, I'm literally up in my cabinet here. Um, MCT oil we add. Um, and you can research all the reasons for on, and each one of the, um, what each of these things brings to, to their diet covering, you know, covering the supplemental ends as well. Um, so today I've got, I made a squash for her an acorn squash and I didn't put anything on it. I just baked it just for her. We also include a little bit of kelp today. I had celery on hand. Um, and that's why I thought of this too today, because this is like what I had on hand for now. Now, sometimes I will give her this pumpkin uh, apple mix, but I didn't today because we have fresh pumpkin, um, pure pumpkin puree, and I also have fresh apples in here. So um, she eats approximately 22 ounces of food per day. 
and the ratios you can look up um, for the BARF diet to get a better understanding of, you know, the ratios of, of um, the, the different meats, the types of meats and fruits and vegetables and what supplements. Um, so I wanted to really just kind of take the mystery out of it for people, for people who have been wanting to try this. Now, bone meal powder, you don't have to buy. And I give her a little bit, but she gets raw meaty bones. We go to the butcher, they give us a big giant bag of these bones and they're very inexpensive and they're filled with bone marrow. They're raw. They're, she gets all, that is really her primary and only treat, if you will. And we will go buy dehydrated, some dehydrated little hand treats like once a year. <laughs> like I think we've only been twice since she was born. So, um, just to have on hand or a little bit extra snacks. She also gets, um, a variety. She loves almonds. So she gets a variety of almonds every day. Um, that's kind of her little treat. Um, and then let's see, what else do we do? Um, and I mix it up with the fruits and vegetables. So today I had, I do buy frozen blueberries if I don't have fresh. So, um, and uh, today she's got broccoli, um, carrots, peas, the pumpkin, um, the squash, a, a stalk of celery. Um, so each, and I, she also loves strawberries. She gets other things during the week as well. I will give her a raw egg maybe once or twice a week. I put it and crunch the whole thing up, raw egg, shell and all, um, just to, for the added, the for the calcium and she gets at least one raw meaty bone, uh, a week. Um, so it's important also to do your research and find out what you can and can't give dogs. Um, they don't eat citrus. So I do give her because we do not use commercial flea and tick um, uh, <laughs> chemicals, I will say. I uh, use. Um, do I highly recommend and have learned a lot from uh, Dr. Becker. And she has a homemade um, insect repellent that I make, um, and it's made out of apple cider vinegar um, and, you know, just ingredients, um, you know, the uh, homemade. Home I use all the homemade ingredients. I do not use essential oils. I use, um, I kind of do the, the real thing, which I can, you know, if you're interested in learning more about that. But I started out using her, Dr. Becker's um, recipe, and uh, use that for flea and tick. And also I give her a clove of garlic, but that's spread out through her whole meal, one clove. And I started that when she was born and we live in central Alabama in right in the woods, flea and tick country. And she does, she's never had fleas or ticks. And actually the only one or two that we have seen on her in the last year and a half were not even attached and we just took them right off. So I'm going to kind of swing around here and, and kind of show you what Dave's doing over here with the the meat. So tell us what you got in here. Pork, beef, chicken, chicken gizzards, cow liver. Okay, so that kind of covers her, um, pretty much her organ meats. Um, uh, we prefer to do it this way. Now, people, you can start your dog just giving them a whole chicken wing or, all the, or the, the feet or just the whole breast. We have just found that we like to do it this way because we put it in the sandwich containers, which I've done a few videos showing quickly how we do it. But so Dave puts it all weighs, he weighs everything out um, and we'll dump in all of her fruits and vegetables in here, mix it all together. And then he weighs each one out in a sandwich container, uh, 22 ounces per day, and then freezes them all. And we usually go about what, uh, 10 days or so. Mm -hmm. Um, we try to go as long as we can, but as you can this, see, it's, this is gonna it's be mixing probably a little bit more than 10 days. And yeah, guys, it takes a little bit of time. Um, and it is an extra step and we probably, it takes us about, I would say if you're including the shopping, but if you're already going shopping, like for yourself, you know, it's, it's just a negligible amount of extra time unless you're making a special trip. But how many of us make special trips for our dog food, even if it's to the pet store, to the pet store? And sometimes you have to drive an hour or maybe you have to get in on Amazon or maybe whatever. So, so when, when she was a puppy, we carefully measured out each protein, figured out <laughs> uh, the calories, the, the types of uh, uh, mineral and, and values that each type of meat had uh, and made sure that we had the exact amounts for her and the weights 
the amount of food for her at her weight and age. So now that she's older, yeah, uh, it's a lot easier because we go to the store and we could buy a package of you know whatever is on sale yep. of beef of, of beef and uh, we, we whatever might be on we sale do shop the chicken, sales yep uh, whatever might be on sale. So for, how so I actually explain that a little bit too. So one week you may have a little bit more chicken in her ten day yeah. diet, maybe one week because pork's on sale. So right. maybe she have a little bit more pork that mm. week, but we don't mono meal we don't like she doesn't get like all just hamburger or all just beef in a day or all just chicken right. and we found that this is actually the easiest way to do it for us for us because we could spend the one hour one an hour and a half this is about an hour an hour and a half to cut it up and portioning it and out portion and freezing, freezing it. it and we know we've got you know a week a to week two to weeks of, worth of and talk about great meals. for traveling you guys they're the fro you just and grab you could grab three or four frozen uh sandwich containers out of the and and you could go away for the weekend because one container is both of her meals for the day so we split the containers she gets half mm -hmm. in the morning half in the evening for dinner and so it's a very very convenient so if we <laughs> instead bought enough meat for a week or two weeks and wanted to give her steak today, chicken tomorrow. We could. We could do that. We could but do that. It would take a lot longer because you, you, gotta, have, to, you have to thaw the individual right, things. Right, and portion it you have out. To know how much, it somewhat. weigh it. <laughs> and then the other issue is, uh, you know, that's going to take even 10 or 15 minutes a day to get her meal ready for that day. Exactly. And she gets two meals. And this is so easy. And you take is, it out of the freezer yeah. and thaw it. It's great. Right. And we, we take out about three, I guess, at a time. That way, three thawed at a time. So that here's, way. Here's the other thing nobody talks about that we have found. I could give her, you know, not that I would buy a T-bone steak and, and feed my puppy a T-bone steak, although I have seen that on YouTube. <laughs> oh, yeah. But if I give her a T-bone steak, she would take it out of the dish, run all over the house with it, make a big mess, and it's raw. <laughs> now we have yeah. raw meat all over the house. And, and that's a good point. Because not all dogs just will sit and eat that big piece of hunk of meat over their dish. bowl. Yeah. <laughs> no, not usually. And in the winter, she's, I mean, I guess we could do something like that outside in the summer, but she's still dragging um, around raw meat. And blanched almonds is what I give her. I just buy, I, whoops, I dropped it. I buy a blanched almonds, and that's her kind of treat. Sorry, Dave, didn't mean to interrupt you there. <laughs> I just thought of the almonds because I, I buy them blanched that way I don't have to we used to soak them and take the skins off and that that's why I said that I'm like yeah we, we just buy them blanched <laughs> so and she likes a crunch um yeah so I'm thinking what else do, did I leave anything else out or what we would put in there and oh we do have some chia seeds that we put in there you know I thought we did find out though right away turmeric and pepper oh tumer yes turmeric uh, ground pepper because the ground pepper Helps, helps activate the, the helps turmeric. After, activate the turmeric. We mm -hmm. discovered though very early on she does she does not tolerate uh, flaxseed. She just got icky and itchy and weird. So it was like yeah, we just do, we don't give her flaxseed. I was trying to think if there was a, oh she has she also like I'll give her you know throughout the week if we're eating strawberries she'll get some strawberries. She'll have a couple bites of banana. Um, she loves melon. Oh, she loves melon. A lot of that stuff, though, I don't put in the food to freeze. Well, bananas I do and strawberries I do. But the melon and stuff, I typically just give her a piece, you know. Um, my arm's getting tired, so. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so Dave's putting in a couple chia seeds. And so um, I was thinking about what else we might put in there that I haven't mentioned. But, really, I just wanted to... Again, take the mystery out of it all and, and relax into it. And people, are, of course, are going to ask, you know, well, how much does this cost? And, you know, honestly, between all this, the junk food I used to buy for my dog, it, I probably spend, I, I'm, I'm, it's about the same. And even with inflation, I was just asking Dave this morning, was about cost us still, you know, and we were averaging about five, it was about $5 a day on, on her. So I think that's yeah. ish maybe, still a maybe. Maybe less. Maybe less. But. So, you know, but then again, it's like I'm not spending money on junk food for her. She is so completely satisfied and so, so active and healthy and just everything about her just exudes nothing but energy. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, so I just wanted to 
take this few minutes to, you know, um, share just what we do, how we do it, why we do it the way that we do it. And because a lot of people, you know, it's nice to make shorts videos, but it doesn't really, it doesn't explain the whole picture. It doesn't show who you are, that you're just normal people, um, you know, just wanting to do the best for your dog. And hey, I get it. If you've got a bunch of dogs and big dogs and, you know, maybe this isn't for everybody. And again, she, she weighs 30 pounds, but overall, you have to feed your dog. And I will just say one thing. <laughs> it costs a little bit more than the cheapest dog food, but if you add in the pet yep. visits and the medicine yep. and all the other things that happen yep. f from feeding... Yes. You know, My last dog was very, very food, sick. It, and every... He was on monthly medication. Is is yep. not good for... And you know, I think that's one of the things that sparked my... Uh, instinct to do this too is that it doesn't matter anytime you look on on the internet about dog uh, you know packaged dog food and things there's always seems to be some issue <laughs> you know like some recall or something and and I just remember how sick my last dog was and how I could have avoided it if you know and and I spent I'm sure more on him than I do on this raw food it's just the time and I know you guys it takes more time um it's just a matter of, but does it, you know, but does it well, really? Well, that hour, you're going to the pet food place. Yes, or you're sitting on, online. That you could take just sitting yep. in your house and... Exactly. Food. And you know what, too, you guys, it's so funny because she knows when we're making her food. She can smell it, of course, and she just is so calm and quiet. And she, then I'm just going to flip this over. She gets to lick the bowls. <laughs> so there is that. So she, um, for her on prep day is she, it's like, you know, getting, getting to lick the bowl of frosting. So she loves to lick the bowl and she's just, um, we're, you know, we're all happier and I feel so much better about, about what I'm feeding her and the, the couple of extra hours really, um, and I was actually laughing with Dave a little while ago, and I think that's part of the, <laughs> the thing. I just, the reason for this video, too, is because I was feeling about the gardening and, and, and growing, you know, the same veggies that you do. And I do put green. I give her greens and lettuce. I just don't freeze that. Um, but um, she also gets, oh, uh, kale. That's the other thing. She, uh, she, I do put kale in there, too. Um, so anyway, um, and we do our best to practice clean kitchen techniques. Yes, we do. Yes, we do we really do. Um, and it was really because I felt the love that I was saying to Dave when I'm cutting up her food and when he's cutting up her food, you know, and 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 you know, it's like it's part of us. It's our 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 love and our DNA <laughs> is a part of it all. So, um, so anyway, that was part of the joy of it all. And I know this is getting a little lengthy, but I think it's a, an important thing to share. So, and my arm's tired. <laughs> so love you all. I hope this inspires you. Even if it's just adding more raw stuff to your dog's diet, um, and getting them used to it, even if you can't do it all or, you know, still have, you know, need to do the kibble, whatever it is, um, but I know between the kibble, the canned food, all of the, the treats, the junk food that I used to buy, I know I exceeded $5 a day. I know I did. Um, and he was a big dog, a bigger, much bigger dog. Um, so anyway, uh, much love. And I just the, the love that goes into the food that we cook for ourselves is the same love that I feel when we're preparing her food. So um, every time we feel like, oh, no, it's time to make, you know, dog food again. But it's like while we're doing it, we're just in the zone. We're in the love of doing it. And so we're ready. Dave's ready to go package it all up and literally square sandwich containers. And um, it's just a, it's a great process for us. So thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. And happy puppy feeding. Love you, doggy feeding. <laughs> all you puppy parents. Love you. Bye. <laughs>